So we all know by now that the Raspberry Pi is a tiny Linux computer, and we also know that Android is based off of Linux. With all of that in mind though, you'd think that Android would port really easily to the Raspberry Pi. There isn't really official support from the Raspberry Pi Foundation now for Linux. Anyone who's been able to get Android onto the Raspberry Pi in any of its many iterations has kind of been a, a true do-it-yourself software job, um, something that's actually a little bit out of my scope of knowledge at the moment. So I've been reliant on um, things that are around on the internet, and luckily there is a lot of support. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to try out a very specific iteration of Android, though specifically the Android TV operating system, which you'll find on like Nvidia Shield and media players like that. Um, my interest kind of stemmed from how so many people are using Raspberry Pi as a standalone media player, using things like OSMC, Kodi, um, things like that. But although those media players are great for your locally stored media, um, they don't have the support for the apps um, like Netflix or Amazon Prime and things like that. And there's still a lot of stuff kind of lacking in support like that on the Linux and Android TV OS, um, someone was able to uh, kind of compile it all down and make it so that you can boot it onto your Raspberry Pi via an SD card, just like you would with any other operating system that you want to run the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's a wonderful video um, by Geek Till It Hurt, um, and he has a video where he shows it working, and he's been able to make a zip file with it all compiled because otherwise, um, the files for it are living on GitHub, and you'd have to kind of put everything together yourself to make a disk image. Um, and again, that's kind of out of my scope. I think I have a lot of people's scopes as well for what they're able to kind of do. And then there's another video out there that I'll link below that actually goes through installing Android TV OS onto your Raspberry Pi. Um, even going as far as showing you how to make the disk image for it and everything, and also how to sideload applications using the Amazon Fire TV um, kind of little program that you can run on your computer. I'll link that below. I'm not going to rehash that because I think he does a really awesome job of going through it, and that's the guy that I use. But I just kind of want to show you how the Android TV OS is working on the Raspberry Pi right now as it stands with this distro that is available. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm going to power up the Raspberry Pi. Um, apologies, it's still just kind of the camera recording my TV for the screen. I'm looking into getting a capture card soon, so that'll hopefully make kind of tutorials like this a little bit better. So, giving power to the Raspberry Pi right now. Okay, as you can see, it gets up to the Android splash screen. You think everything's gonna be good. Looks promising, right? So this has happened to me every time I've booted. Um, it basically has a graphical crash, and then I also get an error for Google Play services. Um, but what I found works is if I just hit escape a couple times, see how that all went away? And ooh, it's a little bit glitchier than it has been. Um, okay, it seems to have kind of stabilized. Um, I'm gonna mute until device restart. So this is a lot glitchier than it has been. Um, I'm actually gonna reseat the HDMI cable. Um, see if that works. Okay, seems a lot better. Oh wow. Okay, so gonna mute that as well. So I've side loaded a couple of apps, uh, one of which uh, ES File Explorer, Google Play Store, Netflix, YouTube. You can actually see some YouTube videos up here just like how you would in Android TV. And I just wanna point out too that you would be using um, to kind of navigate around, uh, cause this is an Android TV OS, you would use escape as kind of like your back button, enter as kind of okay, and then your arrow buttons up, down, left and right. Uh, cause you're basically emulating the um, remote that would come with the OS. But if we go into settings, um, you can see all the usual stuffs on the side here. Um, so going to apps, show me download apps. So these are all apps that, that I side loaded. Um, and what you do is you download the APK uh, of the apps. And now be careful when you're downloading APKs because not all sites are created equal as far as that goes with um, security and everything. I'll link down below a, a site that I've been using. Um, there are a lot of options out there and you can even like grab them from your own Android device. Um, but one thing I noticed, because uh, this distro for 
Android TV um, is uh, was created back in June 2016. So knowing that, like the OS version that was ported will only be aware of apps that were kind of created back then. So at first I was lo side loading apps, like the newest versions, and I couldn't get those to work at all. But when I, I went back and was able to get the distros from like May and June 2016, those worked a lot better. I still haven't been able to get the, Andro the Netflix app to load. You can see it just kind of closes out and then it'll kind of go into an infinite loop. Uh, same thing with Google Play Store, like the splash comes up and like it looks like it's going to work, but then just doesn't quite cut it. Yeah, it's going to go into a loop. So just hit escape a couple times when you get out of there. One thing I was able to get to work though was YouTube which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a little glitchy. By a little, I mean very. Um, all right, let's, yeah, close out, I know. Uh, if, I, if you need to get an app to kind of force quit, go, I found if you go into apps and then select the app, force stop. Okay, and so that one's fine. YouTube is the one I've had the best success with um, as far as like your kind of mainstream media apps. With one little exception, I can't get audio, but I've read that that is um, kind of a common problem with this distro and you kind of have to go into the command line um, before you install the distro and kind of get everything working that way. A file organizer works really well actually. So if you wanted to kind of get media on here, you totally could, so that's cool. That's one thing about Android is like you don't have that automatic um, command line support. You'd have to install like a third party app, which I haven't explored yet on this, um, cause I think actually it'd be worth it to just kind of compile a new distro rather than the zip one that is generously provided. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind cause there is a fix to um, fix the HDMI audio. Um, but I can't really seem to, to do that right now. But I was just kinda, I thought it was really cool that I was able to just get YouTube to launch previously. Here we go, now it's launching. Takes a second. It's a little bit slower, but again, it's, you're using an ARM processor in the Raspberry Pi, you're kinda, you're definitely, see I can um, navigate, everything's fine. Um, let's see if I select video, it's playing but I get no, um, I'm able to get subtitles to run, but I can't quite get um, video or audio to run. So it's kind of like having a little black screen storybook if you write to you. But again, like this isn't meant to be like perfect right now. Um, so much Trump, can't escape. <laughs> But yeah, you can see I can navigate and everything. Um, this is the smoothest control. And this this distro is from May, I think, this version of the app. So that was cool. One thing too, if you're gonna try sideload Android TV OS apps, like you need to make sure they're for the Android TV. Don't sideload something that's like for Android Nougat or something like that. One crazy thing with YouTube that I found is when I go down to settings, the app just closes. It's like, nope no settings for you, but that's okay. When we go back into settings, like, I've had, like, really good luck with, um, being able to, like, fix up the security settings and the network settings and all that. I had no issues with any of that, so that's cool. But, yeah, like, if I try to search, it's like, no, you can't search, sorry. Um, and if you were able to get the Google Play Store to work, then you'd be able to download apps natively to Android TV, which would be really cool. But um, for now, the side loading seems to be your best option. But yeah, it's, it's basically Android TV OS on the Raspberry Pi as it stands right now.
Alright, so as you saw, the performance is a little underwhelming right now for Android TV OS on the Raspberry Pi. But I think it's more of, it's meant to kind of be more of a proof of concept that yes, this can run, but not well. Um, but when you think about the reverse engineering and everything that had to take place to be able to port it to the Raspberry Pi, it's very impressive, and I think that alone should be applauded. Um, I think in the future we're going to see more Android support for Raspberry Pi, where so many users are taking it upon themselves to be able to port it to be able to run on the Raspberry Pi. And also, um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, you may have heard, recently released their newest board, which was a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is basically the Raspberry Pi Zero, but with now built-in wireless internet support. So. They said that, kind of basically, um, upon that release, that they've really taken their hardware as far as they can right now to still fit within their model. Um, so they're going to be concentrating a little bit more on software, um, which we saw with um, Pixel being released as like the Linux Raspberry Pi um, distro. Uh, and I think that they're going to start kind of um, looking at different um, Linux uh, distributions and making like official Raspberry Pi versions of that and they have said specifically that they would be doing an official Android distribution. And I think once that comes out then people will be able to kind of run different Android distributions a little bit better on the Raspberry Pi and I think eventually Android tvOS would eventually run better on the Raspberry Pi as well. So I think there's a lot to look forward to as far as Android support on the Raspberry Pi and um, I'll definitely be looking into um, different ways to run it on the Raspberry Pi as well in the future, so stay tuned for that. But for now, that's all for today's video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, toss me a thumbs down, leave me your questions and comments below. Have you tried running any Android distros on your Raspberry Pi? Let me know, or any other weird Linux distros or any of the other kind of non-traditional Raspberry Pi operating systems. Let me know about your experiences. Uh, find me on all social media, links are down below. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more content like this, and until next time, see you around.